Paul from Cerebral Boar. So, first of all, how's the tour going? Uh, tour's going great. Um, we're a weekend. Weather's been shit, but the crowds have been great. All the bands have been great. The transport's great. Driver rules. <laughs> um, aye, so it's very good. Very Nothing good. crazy happening on the bus or in the in the actual shows? Oh, there's crazy stuff happening, but that's unmentionable. <laughs> All right, well, so what are the main differences between touring as a band that's released an album and a well-received one at that too, when you used to be an underground band? Good question. Uh, people never really took us seriously when we were uh, when we didn't have an album. We used to hear all the time, but, oh, when are you going to have your album? When are you going to have your album? And that seemed to be this thing that, in many ways, we were kept down by, you know what I mean? But... Touring with an album, yeah, it seems to have a lot more credibility. People know the songs, people listen to it, and shit, you know what I mean? Whereas the only thing we had it before was like a demo. The whole time that we, before the album, all we had is one demo. And uh, yeah, that was pretty shit, you know what I mean? So, aye, so it's obviously it's better um, now touring with an album. A bit more credibility, a bit more sort of people take you seriously, you know? Gotcha. All right, well, uh, Blabbermouth said of Maniacal Miscreation that budding BDM acts looking to avoid getting lost in the herd should take careful notes when listening to this one. How does it feel to be uh, told that you're one of the best this early in your career? don't think it quite said that, did it? <laughs> that's, um, that's the quote I've got here. Uh, it's good. It's very good. Um, I don't know. What, what can you say? I, um... I suppose it's good. It sort of gives you. Um, it, I guess it means that you've got stuff to live up to. You know what I mean? Yeah. We'd probably have been better. People think we were a bit shit, <laughs> and then sort of get them with a the sucker punch of the second album. But no, uh, it's good. I guess um, you can't say anything bad about getting nice compliments. I guess maybe the guy's high. Like, <laughs> but it's nice. I guess I'm lost for words. I don't really know what to say. <laughs> I've got a few more uh, complimentary quotes, but I'll save that for later. Uh, keep, let's talk keep, about Bull. Keep, uh, keep them coming. Let's talk about Bull Cadaver, for which she made a video. I was I was wondering about uh, Son's crazy uh, vocal technique that she does there. You know that crazy vocal scale that she does. Yeah. Is her? I mean, I was, I was just wondering because I, when I first heard that, I had to go back. I thought it was something electronic. I didn't realise it was just that's that voice. Uh, nah, it's, it's all. Pretty, it's pretty fucking impressive. Ah, it's all hormone, like. Uh... People even now still think that she's using a voice fucking modifier or something like that, but she's not. Uh, I, uh, I like her vocals, they're good um, and they're real. And I think she, I think they, they're showing off pretty well on the ball cadaver. There's a few techniques in there that we're not probably not going to use in the next album. You know, we were quite uh, diverse with her vocals on this one because when she came into the band, everything was already written. You know what I mean? So she was just sort of taking through everything in yeah. the studio. So is she going to be writing more around her style for the next one? Well, Son doesn't really have a style because this is her first band, really. You know what ah, I mean? I so this is all really being developed just now. I mean, as far as Cerebral Board goes, we have a songwriting style. We have like a sort of lyri not a lyrical style because the, the, the lyrics are just mostly fucking whatever really right. make, make it sound stupid and it'll do <laughs> uh, but I, I mean vocal technique wise like there's a lot of stuff um that we probably won't explore again that we did already but there's also other stuff that we'll be doing that she'll be doing vocally on this next album i think her voice has really grown since then like since uh when we did that album i mean she's only had a band rehearsal with us then we went into the studio and recorded the album you know so uh, she didn't really have a lot of space to put her own stamp on it. But on the next one, like, yeah, she's a lot more, uh, she's come a lot more to life. I think her voice sounds a lot more aggressive and a lot more full, you know. I think uh, even like the single we put out recently, Horrendous Acts of Iniquity. Yes. A lot of people like commented on that. They said that her voice is really matured and she sounds a lot more brutal, you know. So I would agree. I would say the same. All right, you ready for some more complimentary quotes from people? Always. <laughs> All right, I'll quote all music then. You guys combine death metal brutality with a surprising dose of melody and technical skill. Did you take this approach to your sound as a way of standing out? No. Um, Just what you feel comfortable playing? Yeah, literally. Uh, that's me trying to rip off Spot of Possession. Okay. Cerebral board hat by accident. <laughs> uh, nah, that's not actually true. It's kind of true. Uh, nah, I don't know. Like, it was just sort of what came out. 
I wasn't a, I'm not like a guitarist, guitarist, you know what I mean? I haven't spent years playing the guitar and doing all this. I sort of just picked up the guitar by accident. Right. Never really gave a fuck about it. I still don't really give a fuck about it, if I'm honest. Who do you take inspiration from? <laughs> on the guitar? Yeah. I don't know, like, on the actual, of playing the guitar, I don't know, like Dimebag Daryl. Of course. Definitely inspired me to play the guitar, like Pink Floyd. Even before Pantera, Pink Floyd made me think about the guitar. Um, which is obviously it's not the same type of music, but it's the same instrument played in a different way. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm quite an accidental guitarist, you know, so I don't really have many stories to tell about my inspirations <laughs> to start playing. It was all by accident, you know. My parents bought me a guitar for my Christmas one year. Never asked for it, but it was only because they saw a guy that I know around at my house a lot and he played the guitar. So they thought that would be good for me. Do you like occasionally busting out um, the crazy solo every now and then, like Dimebag used to? Nah, I don't bother my ass. Like seriously, like, even when I, even when I was like learning, the, when I was learning to play the guitar and stuff, I never really cared about being able to play solos. It was something I just never bothered experimenting with. I don't know what it was because I had all these other people around me who were really good solo players or lead players, you know, and I just never bothered. No, I see. But. Um, I don't know, I've been thinking about it a bit more recently, you know, like Pat from Cannibal Corpse actually gave me a big lecture on it and he gave me a book. He was like, you need to read this and read this and read this and within a year you'll be here. That, that's the encyclopedia of guitar solos? Yeah, I meant to bring it on this tour actually, I'm going to pick it up tomorrow in Glasgow. It's called the Guitar Grimoire, but uh, Pat drunkenly went and grabbed it for his bunk on the bus and like gave that to me, so that I was hoping that would kind of be a starting point for something, but I don't want to become a band to have guitar solos all through their stuff. Right. I like guitar solos when they're really relevant, but I find in death metal a lot they're mostly there for the sake of it being there so they can't be criticised for not having guitar solos. Right. Because a lot of people think guitar solos are metal, and a band without guitar solos are not metal. But obviously they're fucking idiots, <laughs> and, uh, and I don't listen to a word they say. <laughs> I'll quote from your uh, MySpace page now. You were self-managed and self-promoted with no label support until December 2010. So it's evident that you're extremely dedicated, you're very passionate about it. As yet, do you think consider yourselves a success story? Uh, in comparison to like where we started, yeah. Um, but, I mean, we're still in the middle of a lot of work here. It's like, I don't really get any time to reflect, you know. We're not we're not a band that sort of get and do a tour and then work for six months and hang out and then maybe do another tour. Like we're a band too. Like we are just sort of like doing it constant mm -hmm. and always have even long before we anybody gave a shit about who we were or what we were doing. We were always just working, working, working. Um, but I don't really you don't really take me to reflect on where you are and stuff with that. You get a kind of idea from just people's reactions and that sort of shit, you know. But I think it's better not to reflect back on where you are and try and get a gauge on. Do we have success yet and all that shit? Because there's too much work ahead. You know what I mean? Mm. There's stack. There's more work ahead than we've been through already. You know, so I tend not to look back and sort of try and gauge how we're doing. You know, just sort right. of keep your head down and keep working, keep jumping on the opportunities. What would make you stop and, and reflect and say, "Wow, we've made it"? What would? Car crash. <laughs> uh, paralysis. <laughs> I was, I was thinking like headlining a festival or something, <laughs> getting an um, endorsement from like a, a huge uh, metal star, something like that. Um, album going double platinum. Well, I mean, album going double platinum, that would obviously help because that would mean that I could suddenly afford to pay my butler. <laughs> uh, but I, something like that, I mean, stuff like that, being asked to headline big festivals where you've clearly got like the majority of the fans there and these sort of things, yeah, uh, they, would, they would obviously start to make you think but even at that like I don't ever want to get into a position of assuming that we have a status you know you have some sort of status because you can see things a couple of years ago and you can see things now but yeah I don't know yeah, I, I just think it's best not to think about it right which I just just focus do. on continuing focus on the now focus on the future and uh, hope that everything gets bigger and better you know what I mean I don't know. It's hard to say. You may have just answered the question, but what advice would you give to the many bands out there who are unsigned and playing pubs and clubs? Well, firstly, I would say determine what each member of the band wants out of the band. 
because if you've got three guys who really want to give it hell for leather and become a big band and two other guys who have careers and they're really just want they're happy to have it as like a rehearsal thing with the odd gig then you need to kind of lay out where you want to go and then act accordingly because the thing with Cerebral Ball was from the day one I knew that, that this is what I wanted what we're doing right now is exactly what I wanted to do like beyond this you know and other people in the band they all agreed and they were all on board but after a couple of months you find that people aren't don't have that dedication and they don't have this and they don't have that and then they all just fall away and it can fuck you up you know people leaving your band can end up making you just throw in the towel it's the same way I have been with this band I mean we've been through a lot of members and there's been like tons of occasions I've just been so close to being like oh fuck it it's, you know it's just people just leave you in a ditch but Again, I think it's because, see, because we've always had shit coming up, we've always been working, and there's, all, there's never been a time where we don't have a bunch of stuff coming up in the next three months. That's what's kept us going, because even in times when, like, we've had, like, two members leave at once before, mm. and who knows, we could have just, like, left it there. But because we had all these shows coming up, we've been like, oh, we need to sort this because we've got these shows coming up, and then we end up just not thinking about the, the situation going stale. And keeping going so i mean with people you really need to determine what you want from your band and then get the right members for what you want to do and um, so then do that and then once you've got your lineup get touring get producing good merch people love merch so uh really i mean with the, with the way the record industry is and you're not making all the money that you were years ago off albums you need to have you need to like come right up to speed on your other like revenue streams and the main ones these days are merchandise and touring so any band who really wants to make it need to get their chops up as far as like touring taking any opportunity you can be willing to have to fucking pay money for your own flights and be out of pocket and sleep on floors and get treated like shit by like crews and people who just don't take you seriously but see if you get through all that shit by the time you reach the point where people take you seriously and you're getting respect you just, you've been through all this shit and you can just take it properly. It's not like smoke being blown up your arse all of a sudden, you know. You just sort of, you just, you see the way it all goes and you just see how you progress through that part of people treating you like shit and that, you know. So just be determined and don't give up, ever, unless you really feel like you should. <laughs> <laughs> right. Alright, big question then. When can we expect the new album? A uh, new album will be ready maybe... April, May next year. Awesome. Seems quite long away right now, but um, it's all written. I've written the whole thing. It's um, good to go. We were supposed to record earlier in the year, and we were going to bring it out at the end of this year, but then because we'd just done Summer Slaughter, then we'd done this tour, and it just seemed like a bad time to bring it out after the year's peaked. So we're now going to bring it out early next year so that we can hit up the States and Europe and do all the festivals and do all that sort of stuff, so we've got a little plan in place for that, so it should be early next year. Alright. 2013. Awesome.